We're back live for another rocking global leader interview. And today I have with us a lady that needs no introduction. We have the incredible Roshni Pakri. We've got with us the incredible Roshni. Roshni, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks. And thank you, Rajiv, for the wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. Now, I know that you are a lady that has done so much, you know, coming from the legal front and I'll say more on, on hands on and, you know, saving lives on a daily basis and now becoming this philanthropist and helping people around the globe. How has it been Roshni? Well, uh, it's been a, a journey that I could say that um, it's worth writing a book about. Uh, I'll tell you what, because it's been, uh, there's been, you know, I say there's been like a thousand curve balls been thrown at me, but I'll get into that. Uh, so I'm uh, Roshni Packery. I served uh, 27 years in the South African Police Services. And in 2017, I left uh, due to my own personal tragedies. And then I joined my husband uh, in business. Um, I'm one of the directors of Toyando Beer Distributors. Uh, we, are, we do it together. And um, the, I'll go back to the personal tragedy. So in 2017, I lost my only child of 16 years. And um, so then I decided um, that, you know, I wouldn't be productive in the South African police services. So that was my reason for um, resigning and joining my husband. And uh, a year later, we decided that, uh, be because it was being such a challenging year, uh, that year we decided that, you know what, um, his death was not going to go uh, unnoticed by the world, if I should say. And so we decided that uh, we're going to start a foundation in his name, which is called the Sanjit Train of Hope Foundation. Oh. The reason we say the Train of Hope is because uh, Literally, we brought hope to the hopeless. So the Train of Hope Foundation is like, um, we travel all over the rural areas, which we used to do prior to lockdown. It just now, it stunted our progress in that way. So we provided hope for kids, the young kids who uh, didn't have facilities, the creche that didn't have facilities. The Train of Hope went in there and provided them with hope by providing such facilities. Uh, otherwise they would have closed down. And so we did like a couple of projects in that same type of manner because my son was a giver and we needed to continue giving. And our foundation, I must add, is purely a non-profit and we don't even accept um, donations because we do it uh, through our business, uh, profits from our business is what we use for the Sanjay Train of Hope Foundation because it's just ours, it's personal, um, so it just belongs to uh, my husband and I. And um, so we've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, projects in that way. And so um, since the lockdown, as I mentioned, uh, we, it was stunted a bit, but we do be still busy with it and we still carry on. So we still try to do at least four projects in a year. Same type of thing. We don't even, um, it's not only um, custom to the youth, it's actually even for the old age or anyone that needed hope. The Sanjay Train of Hope Foundation is there to provide that. Wow, wow. So you see, for me personally, to everybody who's watching this, blow up the chat right now because here's a lady who has gone through many different challenges in life but still came out shining. And I think that is one of the most important messages we want to deliver to people out there. Whether you're going through a challenging time, and I know the last two years has been challenging for, for many people, I think every one of us, and there's been so much of depression and so much of suicide. We want to use Global Leaders Platform. We want to use people like Roshni to be able to empower you to know that no matter what you're facing, Here's a highly impactful lady and our condolences to you and the family who's lost her only child at the age of 16. And I'm so proud of you for setting up this incredible foundation to make sure that you can give back. And I know he's watching upon you and everything that you do Absolutely. to make sure that it's always progressing, always going to the next level. Now, here's the key question that I'm sure everybody wants to know. What is your secret to success, you know, to be able to go through what you've been through, but to still come up and rise, be an influential woman, be a power couple with your incredible husband? How do you do it? What's the secret? 
I think uh, throughout my journey of life, it's like I always say that being in the South African police services, it kind of, it sounds a bit... Um, dangerous. Dangerous, <laughs> but also it's, um, it actually trained me. I always say that God has trained me for the one big event of my life, and that was the biggest tragedy. So I used all of that not becoming bitter, because I think... Uh, Life can go either way when you lose a child or when you lose any loved one, life can go either way. So for us, um, we wanted life to go in a way where we were going to make something. We knew that there has to be a purpose for everything in life. And we realized that we were not the only ones who were in, uh, in the situation. And people want to go under when they become uh, depressed. And it's so easy, to, as I said, to go either way. So I decided that not... I'm going to, I'm still here. My son is not here, but I'm still here. And he obviously, through the eyes of God, I rea uh, realized that I still am on a mission until my time is up. So from then to now, I realize I'm going to make the best of my life. And we are going to make the best of our lives uh, with his memory, with his, um, uh, believe you me, it's, it's not uh, easy. And it's like you, uh, you know, when you break an arm, you have to live with a broken arm. So our hearts were broken. So we're living with a broken heart, but we're still going to live without just existing. So our living means go out there, help the other people, put in everything. So whatever we, whatever we have now, uh, you know, whatever God has blessed us with in terms of business, in terms of whatever we want to, to give. And I realized that giving... Uh, was the best form of healing that I ever had. And I would um, really want to send a message out there to people to say that never stop giving, never become better because of circumstances, because it only makes you only lose out at the end. So when you become still the person that you are inside, however hard, you can make the best of your life and you can still have the joy that God intended for us. All we deserve joy and happiness. And um, so that's what we strive for every day. Well, I must tell you, if you are sitting out here in the room, there's so much of positive energy that Roshni is uh, emitting into this, this, this room because you can see you really mean what you say and you can see it's something that you're passionate about. And I think that is one of the most important things. When you're passionate about something and when you're believing it. Now, I just want to touch back a little bit on what you mentioned when you say God prepares us. God puts us through different situations in our life that we might not understand at that moment, exactly. but later on in our life, it'll come to us and make us realize. Well, you probably get to, a chance to meet a very a da dapper husband who's very stylish as well. On the 11th of June, I know that you're going to be getting an um, influential award for all of the great work that you're doing. And, you know, I can actually stand testimony to that, you know, with Roshni. She's, she's the type of person that always wants to make a difference. You know, she, she's always out there trying to see how she can add value. Now, here's the, I'll say the second last question for okay. today. What message would you give to the people out there? The message I would give is never give up, no matter how hard the situation can get. And life is very tough in many ways. You know, it's not, um, you know, we, we all, everyone experiences challenges and they think that it's the worst that can happen. But I feel that take your worst. The worst is like climbing a stairs. You start at the bottom and you go... You need to start slowly and get to the top. But at the bottom line is don't ever stop climbing, no matter how many holes those stairs have. I actually love that. Never give up. And that's one of the movies we're actually releasing soon, coming through on Netflix and cinema and horror other media platforms. But never give up. And, and something my mentor always told me, he said, you only fail when you give up. So I know you wear many different hats. I mean, coming from the police front, keeping people safe and always going out there protecting our community. You did mention that you lost your only child. I think it was about five years ago. Now, I know there's a lot of people who's watching this video who has lost a loved one. And especially in the last two years during COVID, there's been such a crazy time with, with some of the closest friends, family members, literally just passing away. And I know I lost my dad when I was at the tender age of four. But... How is it that you managed to, instead of just crumble, rise to the top and help other people? What message would you give them? 
Okay, yes, um, it was a very challenging time in 2017 when we lost our only child. And, uh, you know, uh, the, at first it's hard to register because sometimes, you, you know, a lot of people handle things differently. So we decided that, um, yes, we were grieving so much and, in fact, emotionally I was drained because I didn't want to do this anymore. It's like I was a person that uh, all my life I'm a go-getter, even if my mum would, uh, you know, uh, reprimand me for something the next minute I'm like smiling again as though you know nothing has happened so I was that is how I treated my whole life actually um, I realized that that young girl and that um, uh, you know that out there personality that I had when I was three to four was still there and so I used that and I said this is how I'm going to do this and I actually um, you know, prayed hard to say that, God, you know what, I don't know how to do this. This is my first experience. So um, what pushed me in that direction was on the day that my son passed, uh, a lady came to me and she said, I just want to tell you something. Over the next few months, you're going to go through hell. So it's like I had a mind switch. That evening, I, I went to my bedroom and I, my husband was there and I said to him, listen, I'm so scared at what this lady said. She said that I'm going to go through hell over the next... Um, you know, few months, and I grabbed his hand and I said, please, I don't want to go through hell. So I worked from that day. It was like a mind switch to say, I am not going to do what society is going to expect me to do, fall under the covers. How are we going to do this? So I let myself cry. I let myself do all of these things. And then each day I got up and I realized when I got up and left the house and put on my makeup and whatever, I was trying to be consistent in what I was doing. And I went out there and each day was, even if it was a small pebble of sand, I felt better. So that was my, my secret was, let's see how we're going to feel better. When people were busy, you know, the family members were still busy grieving, me and my husband were saying, let's look at how things are we going to do, what we're going to do to feel better. Yeah. And that's what we said, let's go here, let's do this, let's help people. That's when we started the foundation. And the first project that we did when we came home, we felt like a million bucks again. And maybe we'd go back the next two days and grieve again. We get set back a bit, but we keep on going. And we realized that helping others to heal is in turn helping you to heal. Wow. And that was the amazing message. And I'm proof to say, after five years, we have not, we'll never reach the position we were before my son passed. But we're sure going to reach a position where we are going to be content and peaceful again. Wow. I, I think, you know what, people in the studio want to start clapping and stuff after that. Because there was so much of love in what you said. And I think that's what it's all about. You will never end up perfect to that time, to that moment where you had him around. But I think it's so important. I'm sure he will want that for you and your husband to, to, to give back and be happy and, and live a life of bliss and joy. Now, I did get an opportunity to, we were shifting gears a little bit. Yeah. I, I got an opportunity to chat to your husband a little bit before the interview. Yeah. And he told me a very exciting story on how you two guys met. Would you mind telling our viewers a little bit about that uh, exciting incident? Okay, so yeah. So in 1996, uh, when I was still in the police force and I was um, working at the fingerprint investigation department, um, and I was just, I was alone with my parents uh, because my younger sister was in university at the time. So it was just my parents and I. The, re the other siblings were married and living uh, elsewhere. So, um, you know, it was uh, Diwali day that, uh, well, long story short, it was Diwali day and there was a guy at the door uh, who came with the Diwali parcel and uh, exciting stuff, you know, when they bring the parcels to the door. <laughs> and so he came in and um, I didn't see him initially and then my parents, uh, you know, welcomed him and um, so he... Um, when he left the house, he brought the parcel <clears throat> in and when he left the house, he went home and I found this out later that he asked his mum to invite us over and we went over to his house and, um, you know, we just sat there and I was wondering whose house is this and then I saw this guy and then he, actually a part of me actually was hoping it was that house of that guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> the truth is coming out live right oh, here. So, you can see she's even blushing, by the way. So then, uh, but anyway, I got to talking to him. And then when we left, he gave me a, a, you know, a piece of paper. It said, Mark, work, Mark home, and the telephone number. So I got into the car and I said to my dad, imagine this guy. He thinks that I am going to call him. I'll never call him, <laughs> you know. And uh, so I, I left it. And then I, he never called me in a Two, two to three days later, then he called me and he asked me out on a date. But um, yeah, I, for some other reason, I didn't get to go on the date. And then he called me again and went, uh, and I didn't go on the second date. So, so she kept did. turning him down, I see that, eh? So he, he had to work quite hard to, to get <laughs> yeah. your attention. And then eventually, um, you know, uh, we got it together. Or I got my act together and then I went on this date and... Um, Long story short, here we are married uh, 25 years later, but our uh, romance um, was very short. It was just six months. I mean, I'm saying romance uh, in that way because then we became husband and wife. So it was a six months. I'm proud to say that um, married six months and uh, contrary, contrary to popular belief that we didn't need to know each other for 10 years before we got married so and here we are 25 years later it's like love at first sight bring the diwali parcel and suddenly the wedding bells just start ringing <laughs> well um any last words to our people out there i know that that it's going to be such a packed year for you 2022 now that covid is slowly easing out yes. is there any last words for all the people out there and all your fans and all the people who are sharing this journey of life with you I would just like to say, never give up, take your challenges. And you know, the, the cliche, they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I just, I believe in that. And, um, you know, go get your dreams. And if you don't try, you never will know. And everything in life is a risk. I say, jump in head first. Wow, I love it. Everything in life is a risk. And it reminds me of uh, a powerful word that uh, one of my great mentors, Stephen Covey, said in a book called Speed of Trust. He said, it's more costly not to trust. And I think to everybody who's watching this interview today, like, share and follow. Share it with someone who needs us, someone who's lost a loved one, but can still overcome those challenges in life and rise to the top. I'm truly honored to have you, the incredible Roshni Pakri, live on the Global Leaders Show. From myself, Rajiv Moti, I've got one thing left to say. You guys have just been motivated.